You are looking at the most famous shape in aviation history. The hump. The graceful curve that defines the Boeing 747, the queen of the skies. For 50 years, that hump has been a symbol of luxury. It housed the exclusive piano bars of the 1970s, the first-class lounges, the private bedrooms of the wealthy. It is the crown on the head of the queen. But what if I told you that everything you think you know about that hump is wrong? It wasn't designed for luxury. It wasn't designed for aerodynamics. In fact, it wasn't designed for passengers at all. The true story of the 747 is a story of a billion-dollar gamble that went horribly wrong and then accidentally went right. The 747 wasn't built to be the future of travel. It was built to be a placeholder. A temporary plane designed to become obsolete, to be converted into a cargo truck, and then to die. And the hump? The hump was just the way they planned to bury it. To understand the secret, you have to go back to 1965. The world was obsessed with one thing. Speed. The future wasn't big. The future was fast. The Concorde was being built in Europe. The US was developing the Boeing 2707 supersonic transport. Everyone, airlines, governments, engineers, believed that within a decade, subsonic jets like the 707 would be dinosaurs. Why fly from New York to London in seven hours when you could do it in three? Boeing was in a tough spot. They had just lost a massive military contract to build a cargo plane, the C-5 Galaxy, to Lockheed. They had a team of brilliant engineers with nothing to do. And they had a request from Pan Am's legendary CEO, Juan Tripp. Tripp wanted a plane twice the size of the 707. Boeing agreed to build it, but they had a secret fear. They believed that the moment supersonic jets arrived, this new giant plane, the 747, would be useless for passengers. No one would want to fly on a slow bus when they could take a supersonic rocket. So, Boeing made a fateful decision. They would design the 747 as a freighter first and a passenger plane second. This decision changed everything. To be a truly effective freighter, you need to be able to load massive cargo. And the best way to load massive cargo is straight through the nose. But there was a problem. If you open the nose of the plane, where do you put the cockpit? You can't put it in the nose, or the pilots would be crushed by the cargo ramp. So, the lead engineer, the legendary Joe Sutter, took a pencil and drew a simple sketch. He moved the cockpit up. He placed the flight deck on a second level, high above the main deck, so the nose could swing open on a hinge like a giant door. That was it. That was the birth of the hump. It wasn't an aesthetic choice. It was a purely functional, ugly necessity to get the pilots out of the way so they could shove pallets of cargo into the tube. The area behind the cockpit wasn't meant for a lounge, it was just leftover space, a structural byproduct of raising the roof. The gamble was massive. Boeing literally bet the company on this plane. They spent over $1 billion, essentially their entire net worth, developing it. They built the largest factory in the world in Everett, Washington, just to assemble it. The team, nicknamed the Incredibles, worked 100-hour weeks to get it done in just 28 months. But as the first 747 rolled out in 1968, the world changed. The supersonic dream died. The American SST project was cancelled due to noise and cost concerns. The Concorde proved to be too expensive for mass travel. Suddenly, the temporary 747 wasn't a placeholder anymore. It was the only plane capable of moving the masses. And that accidental hump? The leftover space. The airlines looked at it and saw gold. Because the cockpit was raised, the nose of the 747 on the main deck became the quietest, most exclusive real estate on the plane. It sits in front of the engines. Passengers in seat 1A are actually sitting forward of the pilots. It is the only place in commercial aviation where you can see the world before the flight crew does. And upstairs? That awkward structural bulge became the defining symbol of the jet set era. Pan AM turned it into a dining room. Qantas put in a captain's cook lounge. American Airlines installed a piano bar. The hump transformed air travel from a bus ride into a glamorous party in the sky. The 747 didn't just survive, it conquered. It democratized travel. It lowered ticket prices so much that international travel became possible for the middle class.
It carried the space shuttle. It carried the president. It evacuated 1,088 refugees in a single flight during Operation Solomon, a record that still stands. It is the fastest subsonic airliner ever built, cruising at Mach 0.85, simply because its swept wings were designed to fly fast enough to stay relevant in a supersonic world that never arrived. And the irony, the thing that was supposed to kill it, its cargo design, is actually what saved it. Today, most passenger 747s are retired. They've been replaced by more efficient twin jets like the 777 and 787. But the 747 freighter is still the king of the cargo world. Why? Because of that nose door. Because of that hump. It is the only commercial plane that can load massive, oversized cargo straight through the front. Boeing designed the 747 to be a freighter that would survive the death of the passenger jet age. They were wrong about the timing, it took 50 years, but they were right about the result. The queen of the skies will live on for decades, not carrying passengers, but carrying the world's goods, thanks to the strange, accidental genius of the hump. Sometimes, the greatest inventions aren't the ones you plan. They're the mistakes that turn out to be miracles.